Hello, this is Darren Pulsifer, Chief Solution Architect of Public Sector at Intel. And welcome to Embracing Digital Transformation, where we investigate effective change leveraging people, process, and technology. On today's episode, we're going to talk about understanding employee burnout with Uzair Hussein, CEO of District Zero. Uzair, welcome to the show. Darren, how are you? Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Hey, we talked a long time ago. How long ago was it when you first uh, talked to me about your your startup? Wow. Six wow. months it's ago? Got at least six. At least six. I think we're nearing around nine, maybe. Nine months ago. Wow. Um, um, and uh, your hair is on fire or not? I mean, this is a startup. <laughs> this is exciting stuff. Yeah, my hair is still intact. I got a few gray ones coming in. That's uh, awesome. I love it. Still alive, <laughs> still breathing. <laughs> That's awesome. Tell us, um, Uzair, a little bit about your background, um, where you're coming from, and then we'll, we'll dive into a little bit about what you guys do and why employee burnout is so important. Yeah, definitely. Uh, how far back should I go in my background? I just lay it all out, man. <laughs> Well, I guess we'll go as early as birth then. Uh, I was born in Pakistan, Karachi. Uh, my parents brought my older brother and myself here to the States when we, I was about four years old. Uh, grew up in Chicago, particularly the suburbs called Naperville. Um, was lucky enough to go through K-12 in Naperville as well. And eventually, you know, <clears throat> Majority of my professional life was in sales, consumer experiences, um, at the point of sale. And about 10 years ago, I found myself deep in product development. And so today, yeah, here I am uh, working on products and I love it. So. so what made you start your own company? Stubbornness. <laughs> <laughs> it was, oh, I uh, love it. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. No, I mean, quite frankly, I just, uh, I got frustrated. I was working a lot in, you know, retail and again, consumer sales, right? And, and when I was younger, in my early 20s, I was really trying to break that plateau into corporate life. And, you know, just hundreds and hundreds of rejections and, you know, just certain things just didn't make sense. And eventually, it just got to the point where, you know, at that point, I had tried a few of projects of my own. Um, and eventually I just thought, okay, I gotta, I gotta jump, jump in the deep end. So yeah, stubbornness. So you, definitely stubborn, got me. Yeah, that's, that's good. So why did you pick specifically wellness? What led you to that? Yeah. So, well, I mean, my life has definitely been a fun journey. Um, my first major project was called clue and, uh, it was an alarm clock. And our team was working on this consumer alarm clock experience for about 10 years. I was, when I was at Apple, you know, I had learned uh, when the app store had come out, what it really took to have a software or a utility value on the home screen. And I was really driven by these high impact applications. Uh, so I decided to focus on an alarm clock after a lot of iteration and pivoting. And yeah, about 10 years in, so many integrations, uh, you know, learned a lot about how to wake people up in different personalized ways, whether it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, you would think it's like, so people have some interesting ways they like to get up, you know, um, but we did fail at our mission, which was to help people get, uh, wake up focused and motivated. Um, we did wake them up, but they kept snoozing. And so, you know, we failed at our mission because, uh, that, individual isn't motivated. And we actually found that, you know, motivation starts as early as the night prior. Um, and, you know, if you talk to folks, sometimes they'll say, you know, I don't need an alarm clock to wake up. Those are the most motivated individuals. They, they have a routine in place. And so when I was about a couple of years ago, uh, decided to help out some students in eighth grade and high school, at my local schools here in Chicago after like a 10 year stint in California and kind of acknowledging that clue didn't really work out. 
uh, it was sort of therapeutic, you know, just being with the younger generation. And it was quite clear that in first period of class or right in the morning, this was a, a much larger problem than I had even seen. Um, and it was progressively getting worse and worse. I had my own uh, wellness growth that I was going through. So I had, under, I had understood the impact of psychotherapy and cognitive behavioral therapy and motivation and productivity. And, you know, it was one of those aha moments where I just thought, you know, if I wanted to really make an impact, how could I do that? Where would I want to do that? And that's where I found myself in what's called quote unquote wellness, <laughs> you know, that's pretty, um, that's pretty yeah. awesome. You took a personal experience and, and turned it into something pretty cool. Thanks. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely been a journey, you know, and it's just getting started. Like that's the crazy thing is that the deeper we go, the more we learn and you just realize there's so much surface level fluff, you know, in the industries around some of these tools. So yeah, it's, it's quite motivating for me to even just work on this stuff day to day. It's quite well, enriching. And it's really timely with COVID um, because I mean, all the statistics are coming back. COVID has made us more productive right? Because mm. we're staying at home. But now we're starting to see the ramifications of working 60 hours a week um, at home yeah. and not having a separation between home and work anymore. Um, and yeah. burnout is really a big problem. Yeah, it's, it's bad. Um, how much to unpack there? You know, it's even at home, just having a separate environment makes such a big impact you know if you're in the same room too long or if you don't go for a breather or a walk um it's challenging not having human energy around as well uh yeah it's a big problem i mean i'm excited to dig, dig, to dig into this issue because i don't know if everyone has really understood the ramifications of covid and what's really going to unravel over the next six months to a year. Um, this traumatic experience is it, it's going to affect productivity. It'll also affect social relationships. Uh, we're already seeing some of that. Um, people are stressed at home. You know, they're, they're relaxed, not having to commute, but it does get cumbersome a little bit. Yeah. Get me back in that traffic jam. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, I think you it's had kind of I strange, had that, but it's and, true. <laughs> Yeah, no, it is. And I think you had mentioned it in a prior podcast where, you know, you had that um, kind of decompression, right? The commute I did, home. yeah, absolutely. And and it's so true, you know, the commute, it, 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 that separation of environment, um, it really, it, it just mentally, it helps us get into the mood. You know, it's, um, <laughs> it's funny, I think about like the he Philips Hue integration we did with the alarm clock years ago. And now it's just so much more important. Time boxing, setting a mood, setting yep. a motif in your room. It, it really does make a difference. Let's talk about District Zero. So your brainchild, right? You took all of this. Yeah learning that you got on how to motivate people in the morning, which I think is fascinating. Um, mm -hmm. And now you've applied this to um, K-12, to students, um, you know, kids. So t tell us a little bit about uh, your, um, your company and, and what you guys do. Thanks. Thanks for asking. Um, our mission at District Zero is to equip K-12 students and learners with whole learner capabilities. And that's so uh, students and kids can manage difficult emotions, um, which we call blockers, it comes from agile terminology. And, uh, you know, by managing these difficult emotions, uh, students and learners, they can recoup their path, they can, you know, recoup their focus and motivation. So, you know, how do we do this? We, uh, it's actually quite novel. Um, it's a survey system, reporting system, and resources, content resources. 
And what we do is we use the power of natural language processing, sentiment analysis to do this at scale. So currently what teachers have done or in COVID world, what teachers do to try to help their students right now is hooking up Google Forms to then Google Sheets and then trying to control F, looking for negative words and key phrases. It's, it's a part of their job. So teachers and administrators have to do this because of uh, risk. But what the unfortunate impact, the byproduct is the teacher and the administrators become very negative Nancy, if you will. And um, positive reinforcement is what we need right now more than ever. So what we're doing is reducing that load for the teachers and administrators saying, hey, this tool, set it up, walk away, go back to teaching. This system will then start to uncover blockers and pain points that your students are going through. It'll help resolve those through resources and uh, remedy, quick remedies. And uh, if the student needs further support, then the system triages over to the correct individuals, keeping the teacher and the administrator informed. It's like, like school the counselors, teacher, yeah. right? Things like that, right? It helps like- Yeah, counselors, social workers, um, even third-party mental health therapists. Uh, you know, it, it, I guess, you know, students have been taken from zero to a hundred historically, meaning, you know, if someone is frustrated or if a student is showing um, anxiety, uh, typically the process right now is take that forward, the student to the social worker and the social worker, then it's unfortunate, but there's a lot of prescriptions for uh, all types of pills, right? And, and, and so there's no middle ground to reduce that fight or flight. And so, yeah, that's where we focus. We say, so, all right, we're going to, yeah, go ahead. It sounds to me like um, we, we only catch the kids that are having problems in school when it's too late, right? That's absolutely. what I'm hearing. That's what's happening. All right. Yeah, so with, with your guys's tool, now you're triaging thing. You're, you're intervening in that in that middle ground, when things start going south, maybe there's problems at home. Maybe mm -hmm. there's problems at school with bullying. Maybe there's, oh, mm -hmm. I can't even imagine um, how many mm -hmm. problems there are. No, I, I can't imagine. I have 10 kids. So um, wow. they've all gone through school, except I got three at home that are going to start. All three will be in high school next year. So I've gone wow. through the gamut with my kids and you know, wow. um, ups and downs all through, all through school. So I, I understand there's a lot of pressure on these kids and it, I love what you guys are doing. I, I think it's, I think it's uh, wonderful. Thanks. Yeah. I, uh, I didn't know you had 10 kids. That's awesome. That's so yeah, cool. I, I grew up at, uh, yeah, well, yeah, I definitely <laughs> could see that. I grew up in four, uh, total brothers. So I have three brothers and I thought that was like a decent amount. Um, but you know, growing up for what was our, what were our issues that held us back, you know, coming from Pakistan or an immigrant family, right? Like it could be anything from, I don't know if my friends are accepting me or um, I can't focus because I have the sniffles today. Uh, you know, I, I, and it would just be these simple nuances throughout the day that would just totally shift the focus. Right. And, and it would impact the score, the assessment, uh, whatever productivity task was going on at the moment. And so you learn that everybody has these simple impediments throughout the day. And if you just soundboard it, address it, build empathy, then it's quite exciting when you actually see a human get recorrected and redriven towards a mission. Um, and then they just keep going. <laughs> so yeah, that's, yeah, that's awesome. Cool. So how, you know, um, you guys have been running this, uh, started for what, two years now? Yeah. So we two, started doing three? early pilots. Yeah. We started doing early pilots, like right pre COVID actually. Mm -hmm. And then we had pilots going on during COVID and, uh, that's when we had started to build out the company and formate, form the company and, uh, just 
productize everything we had learned. Um, so we just launched our platform in August of this past year. Wow. So, so timely. literally right in the heart. Yeah, I that's mean, what they say, right? It's like <laughs> timing is everything. Uh, well, and, and you nailed the timing on this. So how has it been for these schools that have used it? Um, are you, you know, are you seeing what you were expecting? I mean, COVID's a different beast, right? Because um, in yeah, Chicago, yeah. I'm guessing they did online school for the first bit. Are they back mm -hmm, in school mm -hmm. yet in, in Chicago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Students are back. It's hybrid. So, you know, there's the option for students to either be in class. So right now, what I've noticed, it's about or what we've noticed, it's about a third, two thirds split. So two third is are staying at home remote and a third are in the classroom physically. So that could give some quick ratio. What we're seeing from the impact of the system. So, you know, it's interesting uh, because the system works at different levels of K-12. So in social and emotional learning, right, which is uh, when we talk about wellness, we go a little bit deeper and we look at these core competencies for the whole learner and they're called social and emotional learning. That's like self-awareness, self-management, relationship mm -hmm. skills. We've learned that social and emotional learning only works when everyone does it. You can't give surveys. You can't give surveys to students and expect social and emotional learning to just happen at your school. There's this empathy element and you know, it's administration is trying to recover empathy between principals and teachers or administration and principals. Uh, there's a community element where the superintendent and the board of education is hoping to recover empathy with parents and the taxpayers and most importantly, where we see the impact is between teacher and student. Um, there's been a hard loss of connection between the teacher and the student. And to put in perspective, pretty much 99% of cameras are off in class. And, you know, it's, it's, it's sad, but, you know, it, it, you, I, I remember just last week in one of the classes I've been sitting in on, I try to just be in classes all the time. I got so like internally emotional, emotional when a student turned the camera on after about, you know, three, four days of us all working together. It showed me that this student was starting to build trust and they were starting to share and open up. And since then, that student has just been participating so much more in class. And I, you know, that's the, that's sort of the aha uh, moments, you know, another story, a teacher you know, they, he found depression alerts in the check-in, decided to have a conversation with the student after class. Just a simple, hey, how's it going? Student starts opening up. Next thing you know, they see each other in the hallway two periods later, and they wave to each other, something that they would have never done, you know, in the past. And now that same student it was crazy. The same student turned in homework assignments, brought the letter grade up by two letters within a week of running District Zero. And, you know, that just, it kind of blows your mind a little bit. Well, you know, I mean, you, like, should be, you should be really proud of yourself. I mean, you, you probably saved one kid. And just saving <laughs> one kid, that's a big deal. That, that is a you. really big deal. So Thank you. don't get me starting to cry. I can't cry on my show because <laughs> I know how that is with my I kids. I, I've had teachers oh, that funny. intervened and helped them out through hard times. So I, I understand yeah. how that works. So how yeah. can how can you take what you this wonderful work that you've done with students? How can we apply mm -hmm. that to um, business now? Because we're starting to mm -hmm. see the beginnings of mm -hmm of mental health issues or burnout, whatever you want to call it in our mm -hmm. employee base. It, it's when I've talked to a lot of CIOs, it's the number one thing they worry about today mm -hmm. is burnout mm -hmm. of their employees. So how can I take what yeah. you've done with K-12 and apply it to, to business? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, 
A, focus is key. <laughs> That's what I've learned. Um, you know, by focusing in K-12, what we found was uh, these deep insights around measurement of, if you want to call wellness, right? And we found these uh, sweet spots around how to, you know, in the tween demographic. So these are really frustrated individuals, right? And if you can drive impact in that age bracket, then the other ages sort of start to fall in place, especially in the consumer journey. Um, you know, I had learned from my past roles that that consumer from the tween demographic, right? You grow them into uh, college and post-college and, and they'll bring that device into the workplace and so on and so forth. So how can we do, what we've done is started experimenting on our own team. You know, we've started to use our own product. We've started to drink our own Kool-Aid and it's forced us to have these hard conversations around what's important for us, you know, in the day to day. And we found that the product is a really cool to use, you know, with ourselves. Um, but yeah, it, it, you know, it just, once you start using your own product, it's, it, you start to understand what the real needs are. And, you know, um, in business, it's, it's, building trust if CIOs, uh, if, if C-level stakeholders are wondering how to do this, it's not going to be by sending your employees a survey or giving them a membership to a third party mental health platform. That's very similar to in K-12, right? Zero to a hundred. You didn't give any support in between. And so our product, it's, yeah, I mean, we're excited this year. It seems like we'll be able to maybe allow more organizations to start playing with this application sooner than later. Uh, we've also seen the same desire in healthcare. Burnout is, uh, Oh yeah. I can't last I read a four. Yeah. I think it's four or $5 billion loss, uh, in medical burnout, uh, resident uh -huh. burnout, nurse burnout. Um, so employees, it, it's the same logic. That's the cool thing, right? Is by focusing in one sector of the market, we can now, grow the same technology into corporate, uh, healthcare, even government, you know, um, veterans affairs, suicide prevention. Uh, and, you know, at that level, you're getting into, I guess that's the benefit of working with technology, right? Is you have high strict security requirements, but then if you have the right infrastructure in place, your technology can expand very fast. So that's the way we see it, you know, is expanding into those eventually. So. Wow. Um, what a great, um, great insight. You guys hit this right at the perfect time. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, um, the, the stars have aligned for you guys. I'm really excited to see where, how you guys uh, continue to progress. It's been exciting watching you from, from sidelines a, a little bit. <laughs> um, and um, no, it's a cool. great tool. Great tool. Thanks for listening to Embracing Digital Transformation today. If you liked our episode, go ahead and give us five stars on your favorite podcast or video streaming site. You can also find out more on embracingdigital.com. Until next time, keep moving forward and do something wonderful.